Hi friends, I'm Allie. Welcome to my channel. This video is for the writers and authors out there who want to write a book. I'm going to walk you through how to write your book starting from zero. The first book I ever wrote is called LA Baby, which was written during my college undergraduate years at UCLA. I'm going to teach you the 10 main steps to write a published and final book. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and let's get started. Step one, what is your why? This is the first step and it's important. Books are not like babies. Books do not just happen to you. You're not gonna wake up one day and find your completed book in the mailbox. You need to make your book happen and that's gonna take thought and dedication. And that all starts with your why. When I first moved to America in elementary school, I distinctly had the dream of being a writer and it's never left my side since. What is your why? Step number two is to find your story. You need to have a story idea. The reason it's important to have a story idea is that the whole point of writing is to tell a story. Your story could accumulate and start living within you, whether that's a couple of weeks, years, or even a decade. The whole process of writing a book begins with your story. From that story, your book is born. So step three is to set a timeline. This step is super important, guys, no excuses. I'm not sure how long exactly your process is going to take. Mine took around four years, but following all these steps will eventually get you there. Personally, I think it's so important to set a timeline because nowadays you're probably not sitting up in an attic in Paris drinking and writing like Ernest Hemingway. You probably have school or work to go to, bills to pay, people to see, good food to eat, so you need to set a timeline for your book. And have to commit to that timeline. I set a timeline of three years and it ended up taking me about four or five years. Your timeline can change depending on life's many circumstances, but don't ever let go of it. Your timeline should be a promise. Step four is to write your book. I'm gonna geek out for a second here and just say I love learning about the different creative processes of famous artists like Georgia O'Keeffe or Da Vinci or Van Gogh. Here's my two cents on the writer's process or the artist's process in general. Everyone is going to have a different process. Learn your own writer's process and keep at it. No matter what your writer's process looks like, whether that's sitting down with a cup of coffee every morning and writing a few pages or whatever it may look like, the output you're looking for is your story written out in words and sentences. So I saw this meme online once and I thought it was so funny even though it's so obvious, but to write your novel, you must actually write your novel. I know, hard pill to swallow. You gotta actually write your story, you gotta get the words out, and there's a couple of different tools you can use for this. So I used Bear for some of my writing, I did paper and pen for some of my writing, and then I did my eventual manuscript on pages. I'll have a separate video getting into the nitty gritty details of how I wrote and created LA Baby, and you can learn more about this process in the other video, but for this book, the very first drafts of it were written out in my diary, on iPhone notes, on random pieces of binder paper. So the best tip that I have for you as you go about and explore your writer's process is to always stay true and so diligent to your story. Step five. So this is where you refine the structure and organization of your novel. This is where you go in and nitpick your different chapters and revise your storyline. So with storytelling, there are so many different ways to tell your story. So you want to make sure that you're telling it in a way that makes sense to other people. 
in step number five, there might be a lot of adding and subtracting going on. You might scrap whole chapters or even characters that don't really make sense. You might rearrange sections and storylines. So in this step, you can expect a lot of changes. Try to add in where there are gaps to potential understanding. Take out chapters that don't really build onto the story or hold meaning. Try to see your story and writing with fresh eyes and see if it makes sense. Step number six. So if you've been following this process and doing all the above steps, you should have some form of a manuscript at this point. Since I started writing the more fleshed out versions of my draft digitally, I actually printed out a physical manuscript. This is one of the later versions of my manuscript. It's an amazing feeling, so relish in it be proud of yourself. Give yourself a big pat on the back. It's also a scary moment because as you're holding this, you know deep down that it is now time to edit. Basically, when you're editing, you're editing for grammar and the flow of your story. The golden rule of editing is to take out any word that is not absolutely necessary to your story. I woke up at 5 a.m. every morning and went to Westwood Starbucks and sat down across the same homeless guy for six months editing my manuscript until I got it down to a draft that I was finally happy with. This, your manuscript, this is your new BFF, this is your new Bible. Get acquainted, my friends. So a side note for this step is to save your work. You can save the printed out versions of the manuscripts that you're making edits on. You can save multiple digital versions of your draft files. Every time I made significant or big revisions to the story layout or the story arc, I would save changes in case I wanted to go back like a month later and see if I actually liked the older version better. I probably had about 50 different drafts saved on my laptop. It's the peace of mind for me. So step seven of writing your book is to get it professionally edited. As a quick pre-step to professional editing, depending on how literate and nice your friends are, you can ask them to do a beta read of your book and give you feedback. So in this step, you're gonna wanna work with a professional editor. I would highly recommend it just as like respect to your readers. You can find one online and there's all different kinds of prices. Um, and budgets depending on the editor and where you find them. And if you're worried about this step, a good editor won't be pushy about your story style. You'll work with them to maintain the tone and integrity. So most of the time they're doing just a final professional pass on the editing before you publish it and put it out to the world. So I would definitely recommend getting a professional editor to edit your manuscript. The eighth step is your cover design. So every book has a front cover, a book spine, and a back cover. So there's a couple of different like resources you can use to design a book cover. You can get a freelance designer to do it. You can go to a site like 99designs, or you can do it yourself. So I actually self-designed the cover of LA Baby because I already had like a distinct image in mind for it. Um, so I kind of already knew what I wanted and felt pretty confident that I'd be able to bring it to life. But basically for your book to get published, you're going to need a cover design. Some ways you can get ideas for your cover design is to go on a site like Pinterest and look at different book covers. You can start collecting like photos of book covers that you like throughout the years. I would always just like go into Urban Outfitters and look at all the books and sneakily take pictures of the ones that I like. I would recommend like thinking about your cover and the, the look of your book um, as you're writing it, but some people kind of just do it as the very last step or just totally hand it off to their cover designer. So it's really up to you. So as an additional step, you can do illustrations or artwork for your book. I wasn't initially planning on illustrating my book, but I decided that I wanted to do it. So I spent a couple of months illustrating really intensely because I had some visuals in my head as I was writing this book that I kind of wanted to like 
illustrate and have be part of a book. So I decided this really last minute. It's totally optional. You really don't have to do it. So the ninth step is typefacing your book. You just want to make sure your title is finalized, that you have the right cover pages and structure of your book. You want to make sure that the spines and like the outlay and the text font and all the details of your book are ready to go. So you can hire a professional typeface editor to do this for you. They're just going to go through and make sure that everything looks proper. And then the 10th step is to get it published. So you might want to start thinking about this midway through your process. There are many different ways to do this. You can get it self-published like I did through Amazon or you can work with a publishing house or an independent publisher. All kind of just depending on what you want to do with your book and your writing career. This video is just meant to kind of be like a big picture overview of writing your book. So I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of publishing in this video. This is basically the step where your book goes out to the world. The first time I held a copy of my book in my hands and read it from head to toe, I think I literally cried. Just kidding. I don't think I actually cried, but you get the idea. So those are my 10 fundamental steps to writing your book. I hope you enjoyed it and found it really helpful. If you have any questions or if you want to just pop in and share your own first book process with me, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you want to give my book LA Baby a read, I'll put it in the caption below. Please like this video, I would appreciate it so much and I'll see you soon.